What does a piece of ground signify? Place to mow. Place to build. Place to call home. Place to worship. This piece of ground has supported children playing games during vacation Bible school. Surrounded families as they played together. Provided a piece of stability for a meal and fellowship. This piece of ground did not always look this way. Other buildings occupied this land. People who were not with us today put in their blood, sweat, and tears to make it viable. Other people who now sit with God in a re heavenly realm claimed this rich earth. They gave of their time, their gifts, their energy, and their hard-earned dollars to establish something significant here. Since 1888, this piece of ground has transformed from dirt to grass, to concrete, to masonry and brick, and to building after building after building. But since 1888, the people of God have witnessed some great things here. Weddings, baptisms, revivals, celebrations, puppet shows, moments for learning, and funerals, and tragedies, and times of grief. It is what the church is supposed to be, a place of sharing Christ through our faith and our actions. Thank you for joining us for today's worship. Over the next few minutes, you will see some of the highlights of our ministries. And then we will worship the God who has been here with the people for 133 years and for another 133 years to come.
Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It is a joy. It is a wonder. It's it's great to see all of you this morning. We have had a great response to all of our worship services here today and uh, throughout the weekend. And and, uh, we're going to rejoice with you, celebrate, and and, uh, talk about this message of Easter and resurrection and what it means. So I'm going to turn things over uh, to Vicki as she leads us in the call. Or before we do that, we got to do some singing. Yes. All right. I am. I invite you to stand as we sing together, He is Lord. Call to worship. May this powerful Easter story inspire us to preach peace, to comfort those who are weeping, to help those who are lost, and to proclaim our faith. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today.
do something that we haven't done in a very long time. And if you don't like it, that's all right. You can bring it up with Francis when he gets here in July. <laughs> I would like us, as we gather, uh, as one people, as Easter people, that we take the opportunity to shake the hands of those gathered around us. Now, with that said, and I've been watching the service in Butte, uh, and, and they do this, if you don't want your hand shaken um, and don't want a hug uh, due to health reasons, various reasons, just put your hands up like this, just say no, that's all right, and please honor that. But if you would take just an opportunity to shake the hands of those gathered around and also wave at those on the live stream, let us do so. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm, uh, as we gather for announcements, want to make sure that uh, we've got um, folks that are letting us know how things are going, especially on the live stream. So just give me a second as I check. Um, uh, just as a reminder, especially if you're joining us for the first time, especially if you're joining us here and always want to get an opportunity to check out our live stream, um, all you have to do is go to gearingumc.org and you have an opportunity to uh, watch our live stream. We also have it on our Facebook page. Um, but I, on my phone, have access uh, through Facebook um, and uh, also to our email address and text messages if people need to get prayer requests, uh, joys, concerns, birthdays, announcements to me. And so that's what I'm checking here. Um, I would like to, uh, in our calendar, not much to share except um, just a reminder to our children, we are going to have an Easter egg hunt after church today. So um, I'm going to be taking off to Melbita. Uh, I just ask the children and the parents, uh, just watch the directions of, of the men's group uh, so that they can get everything put down and, and all the eggs laid. Um, and they will let you know when it's time to, to skedaddle out and, and pick up all of the eggs. And uh, we uh, want to thank the men's group yesterday. Uh, we had a great time, and there is lots of chocolate and jelly beans and all kinds of sugar. So if you want to load up your kids with sugar, um, make sure that they are, they're going to participate in the Easter egg hunt here. Um, uh, I'd like to turn it over to you for your joys, concerns, announcements here this morning. Yes, Jimmy in the back there. Uh, last Thursday, I had uh, our middle grandson, Andy, graduating from the Nebraska Law Enforcement Training Center. And Grandma, so she's got a new law enforcement officer in the family. I still work as a deputy sheriff at Kimball. I'm not sure why, it's 71 years old. However, he's a police officer at Kimball. So if you drive to town and, and you have to see him, and you did something wrong, and he decides to give you a citation, it is a good thing that we were not able to broadcast over the live stream and get that recorded in case that comes back to haunt you. But thank you, Jimmy. Uh, uh, so we wish your grandson well as, as a new police officer in Kimball. So, yes. Your parents' anniversary is on Tuesday, so congratulations. Happy anniversary to the two of you. 
Are there sharing here this morning? Yes. Lift up your sister Deb in prayers. Uh, was in the hospital this week. Thank you. Other sharing here this morning. Yes. We lift up Ron's birthday Friday. He's going to turn 91, is that right? And uh, we definitely lift up your, your wife. I know we've been praying for her a lot. And, and it's been a very, it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey. And, and just, uh, and she's in Ra- the hospital in Rapid City, is that correct? Yep. So, um, well, hope all goes well. But I know that this has just been one more, one more situation, her in the hospital again. So, other sharing. Yes, Sarah. So lift up, uh, uh, Sarah just found out yesterday, yeah, a high school classmate uh, was put on hospice and, and this morning during the sunrise service passed away. So lift up uh, your friend and, and classmates that knew her. Other sharing here this morning. Well, let's go ahead and sing happy birthday to Ron and happy anniversary. And, um, um, and then we'll, we've got some special music here this morning. And Jana Smith are celebrating their 47th wedding anniversary on the 18th. And so we, we got you included. That was part of the anniversary singing that we did. But they're watch, watching at home, and, and so we uh, lift them up on our anniversary. So uh, we've got some special music. We invite our bell choir to come on down.
Thank you. Thank you. We now invite the children to come forward for our children's time. on there we go well I want to show you a trick and it has to do with Jesus all right so let me get out this this deck of cards here and um, when I think of, of Jesus you know see the see the deck of cards here all right so when I think of Jesus I tend to think of Jesus as the king of hearts all right so the king of hearts. So we'll make sure that we've got everyone so everyone can see that. And, um, and this is, I want you to think of this card trick as, um, as the story of Easter. All right? So where we get, where, where, make sure you see it. King of hearts. Make sure that Vicky sees it and everyone back there. The king of hearts. Okay. So what happened on Friday? Does anybody know? Jesus died. He died. And so then after someone dies, what, what, what's our tradition? Where was Jesus buried? He was buried in a tomb. In, in a tomb. In a tomb. So right there. So, so that, that, go ahead and put, push, that, push that in. Push that in. All right. So, all right. Now watch this. You, 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 you saw that where it is? Okay. So Jesus died on Friday. He was in a tomb. And you pushed it in, right? All right. Now watch. So on Saturday and Sunday on the third day, he rose. Are you ready? What the? <laughs> Wait, you have multiple ones. You have multiple ones. This is a brand new deck. But here's the thing. I can only do this trick every Easter. So you have to wait until next Easter. You have multiple ones. Well, there's, this is... <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? You'll have to wait till next, next Easter to find out. <laughs> I, I've got something else to share with you. So this comes. Cinda made sure that she got this for all of you. So go ahead and hand this out this she told me that this is a wonderful book about the lord's prayer and that to you and berkeley there do you have oh you already have one i'll start so does everyone have one yeah so take this home with you and um have your folks uh and grandparents read it to you uh and it's i think it'll be a great one to do right before the easter meal that we have so, I want you to remember that, yes, it was just a trick, and I am not going to give away my secrets, uh, but remember that what we celebrate here today is that Jesus is with us, and that is what is so exciting. All right, is everyone ready to pray? And repeat after me. Say, Dear God, thank you for today as we celebrate Easter and all that it means. Amen. All right. For your first of many, much candy that you're going to get today, uh, go ahead and see Becky back there. You've read it a little bit. Just check the announcements here, see if there's any other prayers that need to be lifted up. Kind of leave that there. <coughs> Come to our prayer of confession time. And just as a reminder, we do have the nursery if anyone would like to uh, available. Maya is, is available to take any of the children downstairs with her. Let us pray together. Holy One, 
We are tired and a little terrified. We do not understand the confusing world around us. It is easier to live in the darkness than to walk toward the light. Forgive us. Open our eyes to see your presence among us. Open our hearts to perceive the risen Christ walking toward us. Fill our hearts with amazement, wonder, and hope. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And it has been our tradition uh, since the pandemic has started. Uh, during our silent prayer, we have the listing of, of folks that we pray for. Uh, it is also found in the prayer list here as well. So let us pray. Dear Lord, today, today is all about a mystery. As we sit here and pray and think and uh, share in our prayers, not only of what we, uh, uh, what we know of, but what are found in our hearts, we are reminded, gracious God, of what today is all about. And for some of us, it is a mystery. We don't quite understand what this life after death is about. We don't understand how scientifically we can believe in miracles. We, we don't quite understand how um, all of this thing, all of these things happen. Uh, we don't understand those that we pray for. And it seems that sometimes our prayers are not answered. Sometimes we are just left with a mystery. And that can be frustrating. That can be difficult. Gracious God, as we gather here on the celebration of Easter, let us just pause and be in mystery. And reminded, gracious God, of, of how you have continued to just hold us in your warm embrace when we have lost loved ones, when we've heard those devastating news but also when we lift up the wonderful blessings that were shared here this morning, but also are found in our hearts. That's also a mystery, too, and how these great things can happen to us. Just like the sun coming up this morning during the sunrise service, and it met us on the face and reminded us, today is a new day, and we're just going to take it one day at a time. Dear Lord, be with us in our mystery as we pray to you. Our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God. Let us sing.
Vicki, I invite you to, to read our scripture lesson first before we go into our okay. message today. I'll be reading from Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Thank you, Vicki. There is a story about a first grade teacher that uh, was reading to her students story of the three little pigs and came to that part where the first pig was trying to buy building material. And she read this to him. She said, um, and as the pig went up to the man with a wheelbarrow full of straw and said, pardon me, sir, but might I have some of that straw to build my house? The teacher paused and she looked at her class and she says, now what do you think that man said to that talking pig? And one boy in the front row raised his hand and said, Holy smokes, holy smokes, a talking pig! <laughs> well, what do you think if you were to encounter a talking pig? I, I would it shake you up a bit? It challenge some uh, cherished beliefs? You, you think you believe in a miracle? TV host Mike Huckabee was one time asked if he believed in the miracle of the resurrection. And he said, I sure do. Uh, when I was governor in Arkansas, we, it is a certain fact that dead people vote in Arkansas all the time. We believe in the resurrection in Arkansas. Now, Huckabee obviously was being humorous, but uh, there was one woman that was being a bit more serious. She was attending an Advent service at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., which is actually just blocks from my daughter lives. And uh, it was an Advent service, and the priest asked the people, what do you really want for Christmas? And this woman thought to herself, what I really want is to believe in the resurrection. You know, um, something like that happened here. Two years ago, these doors were locked. Remember those days? Remember, you could only go through the, the bank, you can only go through the drive-thru. Two years ago, we had, a, we had a joint worship service with the six other United Methodist churches in the county, and we made sure that that church was locked up tight so that no one came and gathered for worship together. And then last year, last year we had Easter, and we were feeling better. And we believed that Easter was a time to kind of open things up. But then we started hearing about this thing called the Delta variant. And then hospitals were starting to fill up. And we were starting to see the newspapers fill up with more and more obituaries. And we didn't have a sunrise service at the monument. That was closed to us. We had just one worship service. And you probably remember we had blue tape around in here. No 8 o'clock service, nothing in Melbita. We had masks in hand. Now fast forward to Lent of this year. And what are we seeing? People starting to return to in-person worship. We have 8 o'clock worship service. Melbita has their doors open. Now this year, yeah, we've got another variant, Omicron. It's sub-variants, but if you're vaccinated, you're not getting a sick. 
And the other day, as Easter got just a bit closer, starting to see restaurants starting to fill up, shoppers feeling more confident, Healthcare workers are finally getting some time off. Can I get a hallelujah with that? <laughs> and in the midst of all of this, I finally heard someone say, we so need this. It's kind of like what's going on right now. This time of year, the sun's starting to come out. We're starting to see green grass come up. The, the warm weather and psychologically, we believe with our long winter behind us, finally... We need some nice weather. So when we think of Easter and the resurrection, we realize we so need this. So this is a participatory sermon here today. So we're going to practice this. So every time that you see this on the screen and I point to you, I want you to say it. So go ahead and say it with me. We so need this. There's a story about a Christian woman. She was confined to her bed in a nursing home. She was ill. She was confused. She kept falling out. She kept bruising herself. The nursing home was so afraid that they were going to be sued. So they strapped her in her bed. They even put up a sign that said, this patient must be restrained at all times. What broke her daughter's heart? Whenever she would see her, she would cry. And her mom would just beg to be released from the bondage of that bed. And the mom finally did die. The first thing that the daughter did, she went and she tore up that sign that was above her bed and she yelled out, Thank God my mom is free at last. There are people in this room right now who have lost loved ones and you miss them very much. There's a void in your heart that I know it's never going to be filled. But you acknowledged that death came and it was, it was kind of like a liberation. And though you miss them with every part of your being, you know that you're better off than if they would just linger there in bed. And as much as we want to hold on to our loved ones and those we love, Easter is a message that says those that we care about and those we entrust to God are waiting for us on the other side. And so today... We still this. Pam Williams tells a story about a pastor by the name of Walter. And Walter had an opportunity to marry his childhood sweetheart. Her name was Mertis. And uh, they were together for 64 years. And Walter tells this wonderful story about how uh, their, their budding romance happened when they were first in school. And, uh, and Walter wrote a note to Mertis. Now, for those of you that are younger, that's what you did in school before you had text messages. You wrote messages to each other. And so in this message, he said that he would like to walk her home from school. But the problem was, he couldn't do it right away. He had to clean the teacher's erasers, and would she wait for him? And because this was before text messages, she had to write a note back to Walter, and she said that she had to go home right away after school, but then she added, I'll walk slowly. <laughs> well, that was the start of a lifelong relationship. Murtis was the first to die. And as she lay there dying, she looked up and she said, I'm going off to heaven. I'm, I'm going to be with Jesus. And then one of the last things that she said before she died, she looked at her husband, Walter, and she said, but I'm going to walk slowly. You know, my friends, this message of Jesus, we find something that is so needed here. We find why... Easter and the resurrection play such a pivotal role in our existence. You know, we, we walk this path on earth for just a, a short amount of time, and we can spend it longing for those that are not here with us anymore, and that's okay. But if that's our only goal, then we've forgotten what to live for. And so we need a message that our loved ones are walking with God right now, but we've got things to do right here first. And this is why... We so need this. Message of Easter and the resurrection. We hear these wonderful words. 
The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Well, I'm here to tell you that, that our search is over. Think about how many of us here are, are looking for something to kind of fill in that gap in our soul. Yeah, and for some reason we just can't find it. We, we seek immediate results. What I like to call the, the video game culture. You know, these games, they are so powerful because what do they do? They offer immediate points, immediate bells, immediate whistles. You know, that short-term reward. Or maybe we search for it in luxury items. Or maybe we long for it in relationships that just are not going nowhere. But in the message of Easter, I'm here to tell you that our search is over. And this is why we so need this. Oh, our long journey through the pandemic has frayed nerves. It's changed the way we do worship. It's taken a toll on healthcare workers, on our education system, pastors. Introduced new words that we never thought we would use on a daily basis. The new normal, essential workers, COVID, Omicron. But there's something about coming here this morning and seeing friends and having the ability to shake someone's hand and hugging someone that's willing to receive a hug back. And we know that our long, long, long journey through this pandemic just might be over. And so when we woke up this morning, we realized something that today, this day was indeed a new day. Well, you know what's coming. We so need this. What about our faith walk? I mean, I, I love the analogy of a journey, and in, I, I personally believe it's really Wesleyan. In our search for something that brings meaning and purpose in this life, we, we try a lot. Churches and temples are always trying everything to get people in the doors. Um, um, maybe it was something that, that you experienced online and you've certainly experienced that and you continue to go to that. Maybe it, it's just something that, uh, that's not even part of organized religion. And your search has kind of taken it to, to some dark places. And, and it all felt good at the time. It filled an immediate need. But it didn't help us grow with Christ. In fact, kind of took us down a road that, that just wasn't maturing our walk with Jesus. But in the message, and in the message of the resurrection, just was not reaching us. It was not real in the way we treated each other. It was not real in the way we treated our bodies. Kind of reminds me of what uh, Father Basil Bennington one time, he's a monk, and he went to a retreat with a Buddhist Zen teacher. And in this retreat, he had a private meeting with the teacher. And the teacher sat before him, kind of smiling in the lotus position, smiling from ear to ear and kind of rocking back and forth. And the teacher said this to the priest. He said, I like Christianity, but I wouldn't like Christianity without the resurrection. I want to see your resurrection. Well, the priest thought about that for a moment and then said this. With his directness, the teacher was saying what everyone else implicitly says to Christians. You are a Christian. You're risen with Christ. Show me what this means for you in your life, and I will believe. You see, we need this message today. Because if we are not risen with Christ, then the resurrection is not real with us. I just listen to these words from Scripture again. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. That's in verse 9 and then verse 12. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. Yeah, you know what's next? See, the resurrection is real when we put our trust in God. The resurrection is real when we realize that our mission is not over. The resurrection is real when our search leads us to Jesus. And the resurrection is real when we realize that in our search for meaning, it has to include what we find here today. This is why we so need this. I want you to uh, watch this video. 
was here. I was here. I crossed this ocean. I crossed I walked this, ocean. this path. I walked I lived this, path. this life. I lived this life. But what did I leave behind? But what did I leave What behind? evidence will future generations what have of my existence? Have of my Empty rooms and faded photographs. Faded the lapidated buildings. The lapidated dust buildings. Dust and bones and chiseled stone. And bones and chiseled stone. The scraps of self. The scraps. The residue of, self. of life. The residue of life. The ripples fade and they the come to nothing. Fade and they come a to print, print, a census, a, a statistic, a census, ink a statistic, drying on a death certificate, dried away, a death certificate, and gone away, forever, and gone forever. But maybe a legacy isn't material. But maybe a legacy isn't maybe material. Maybe a person's impact can't be maybe determined by a calculator. Maybe the ripples of our time on the earth, the ripples of our the love we show, the faith we show, the good we, 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 we do. The good the people, people we help. The people we maybe help. they go on forever. Maybe they go on forever. Maybe they multiply with time. Maybe they multiply until a snowball time. becomes an avalanche. A snowball becomes a drop a becomes a flood. A drop a becomes a flood. A fire. A fire. And a single voice. A tumult. And a single voice. A roaring to the universe. Roaring to the universe. And I walk this path. I I live this life. I live this life. I was here. I was here. Say it with me. We so need this. Easter is so needed this year. Just like the warm weather, the sun on our faces, the green grass, it all reminds us that spring is here. Just like the the opening of churches and and restaurants and businesses and and, and our arms, we're reminded that our long journey is almost over. Easter is so needed because He was here. He walked among us reminding us that God loves us. He was here telling us that we don't need to search anymore. He was here sharing his message that life is a time, a moment to make a difference. He was here letting us know that the resurrection is real. He was here saying that our pandemic will not close our doors forever. He is real in us because he is not here anymore. He is risen. One more time. We so need this. Amen. I want to thank the faithful servants that are going to be with us here this morning. This is our opportunity to take in the blessings that we have had. Because it has been a long couple of years. And to return to God with thanks. Thank you, ushers.
cannot thank you enough for just watching and being with us in those very difficult times and also in sharing your blessings. Dear Lord, this is your day, but we give thanks to you for all that you share with us. In your name, we lift up your holy name. Amen. Would you uh, recite together our benediction? Christ is risen. I will go and preach the good news. I have seen the Lord. Let me go in peace. Amen. I'm going to invite all those to be seated, and I've got some folks that, uh, uh, those that are joining the church today, would you please come forward? <clears throat> We purposely did this towards the end of the service. Um, I don't always, I don't have an opportunity to shake your hands because I'm on the way out to uh, head out to Melbida. But this is going to be your opportunity to shake their hands and to welcome them officially into the membership of the church. So uh, we've got the Larsons that are uh, coming from letter of transfer from the Scotts Bluff Church. And uh, <clears throat> they've been here, been a part, very active part of our church. And so, uh, and I've known you guys for the longest. In fact, Heidi was my doctor when we lived in Claytonia. So I mean, it, well, it, well, one of the doctors anyway. So yeah, so, uh, and uh, it's just a joy to have uh, the Larsons with us. And, um, and then we've got Tom Schutz. Uh, many of you know Tom is Marilyn's son. And Tom makes sure that he takes care of his mom. And that is so important. And uh, Beth Pfeiffer is coming from letter of transfer from the Loveland First United Methodist Church, although she lives in Banner County. And uh, we heard that you are not part of that ammunition dump that took place in the county down there. Okay, so just wanted to make sure that that takes... Walmart didn't, truck went by my house. Detour. The Walmart truck, okay, so I bet you had a very interesting couple of days down in Banner County, yes, yeah. So um, I'm going to say a prayer, and then I um, uh, invite you to, uh, to welcome them into the membership of the Gearing United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much as we um, 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 recognize new beginnings. We have it each and every day. Uh, maybe it's just something to, to wake up in the morning, and that's a, that's a new beginning. Maybe it's, it's to um, take on a new challenge. Maybe it's just to, to be committed to you. And for this and these new beginnings, we lift them into your wonderful name. I ask for your blessings among those gathered here today, and just ask that you be with us on this special day of Easter. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. 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 to stand and let us sing a, a wonderful Easter hymn, Because He Lives, hymn number 364, and uh, we invite you as, you as you proceed out from the church here this morning uh, to uh, welcome in our new members, and then, uh, then follow, with those with the kids, just follow the directions of the men's group, and they'll let you know when the Easter egg hunt will begin. Let us sing. <clears throat> 